Joining us now, one of the men who will lead Canada's entry into the men's ice hockey tournament next month in Beijing. It's former Canuck, both coach and player. Always great to catch up with our friend Nolan Baumgartner here on Sakaris and Price. Bomber, how you doing? I'm doing great, guys. How are you? Very, very well. Congratulations on the appointment. Ever think you'd be an Olympic coach? Uh, nope. Uh, s- still keep pinching myself every day and to, to make sure it's real. Um, uh, unbelievable call I got, and, and uh, I'm, I'm just so pumped and excited to go. I can't, uh, like I said, I can't believe that uh, I'm going to be a, an Olympian at the Olympics. Well, uh, there has been much happening here, both with the Canucks and with the Olympic team over the last couple of months. You mentioned the call. Take us through the process. How did all this come to be? Well, I'd gotten a call from uh, just after I got uh, let go with the Canucks. I got a call from Shane Doan uh, probably about a week later, uh, just asking if I wanted to uh, be part of the coaching staff at the Spangler Cup, which is a historic tournament uh, at, just past Christmas time, starting on Boxing Day there. So uh absolutely wanted to join that but uh, unfortunately that got cancelled uh, but we did have an inkling that if the the nhl pulled out of the olympics uh we'd get a chance uh possibly to be the staff for the olympic team and uh obviously that ended up ended up happening and uh, i got another call there just uh shortly after christmas uh, asking if i wanted to be part of part of the olympic uh canadian men's team so uh, before he even got it out of his mouth, I was a it was a yes. <laughs> twice, twice representing you know Canada Clutch- at the World Junior, so you've you've worn the maple leaf before. What's it going to be like to be a part of that process away from club, representing country, not on the ice, granted, but it's still a part of that process. Uh, how different is the pride you feel in the wins and the losses? Well, it's an absolute honor uh, to go and, and represent your country in any tournament. And obviously, this is the the highest of the high right here, uh, the Olympic Games. So, um, you know, I know that we're all excited. Every guy, every part of the staff is excited to go. There's players on this team that are – they would never, ever have gotten this chance if, if the NHLers did pull out. Um, a lot of sacrifices from a lot of those guys that play overseas. There's some guys that are going to be – 35 years old on this team that this is their last kick at the can. So, um, and there'll be some younger guys that are going to get some opportunities probably later on down the road, but uh, they're going to get this uh, awesome experience to be part of it now. So, uh, uh, you know, I know that we're, we're ready to go. We're so excited to get going. Uh, we've been meeting together as a staff uh, probably for the last month now, just on zoom and uh, we're kind of sick and tired of those. So we're ready to uh, ready to meet up in person. I was going to ask you about that staff. Um, do you know how duties, responsibilities, are those all divvied out? And do you have much experience working uh, with Claude Julian well, I, in the past? N- i never met uh, Claude before this, so um, but he's been great. Uh, he's been really awesome on the on the Zoom meetings. Um, I'm going to be running the D and uh, uh, doing the penalty kill. And uh, Jeremy Colleton, who was the head coach there in Chicago that got let go earlier this year with the Blackhawks, he'll be doing – uh, helping out with the forwards and uh, and the power play there, so it's uh, it's a great staff. Uh, we've been having a lot of fun, and and we can't wait to get going. Like I said, we uh, spoke to Mason Raymond over the holidays, and he got a chance to go last time, of course, and said the same thing as you. And this was on the ice for him. Um, just the, the opportunity fell in his in his lap, and a chance to sort of cap his career. And you're right, guys like Eric Stahl, it sounds like could get a chance to to do that same sort of thing. And then with those younger guys, I mean, can you think of, when you think back to yourself launching your professional career, like what would that do for a an Owen Power to suit up alongside some legends that are sort of finishing off their career to get that experience with a lot of pressure? I mean, this just seems like it's uh, it, it's going to launch some of these kids to get the tap uh, into a, a fabulous start to their careers. Uh, absolutely. Well, I, I mean, if I think back to when I was younger and just, you know, going to an NHL training camp and getting to play some exhibition games and being around some some legends when I first got drafted, uh, just seeing them and learning from them and uh, the wealth of experience and knowledge that these players have, uh, I think it's huge for these young guys to be around them. And hey, some of them, uh, you know, weren't stars in the NHL, but uh, they've been through, they played games there, they've been in the American League, they've, they've played overseas in numerous countries. And uh, just all that stuff, uh, you know, all those things can 
can uh, lead these young guys down down the right path. And when they see these guys, um, you know, I think they're they'll be pumped to play alongside some of these some of these older guys for sure. All all three of us on this call know what it's like to lose jobs in the last uh, little while. So uh, we can we can attest to that question of when is next. I think uh, you know we, we can attest to like you feeling like there will be next, but when is next? Was it just nice to know that you were wanted and seen and 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 to get that tap uh, relatively quickly? Yeah, absolutely. I think it was a tough uh you know, I've I've never been fired before and uh this was the first time. So it was a it was a tough go. I mean, you know, we played on a Saturday night, got a call on Sunday that I was let go and and the team played Monday. So it was such a quick uh turnaround and it took a couple of days to actually really sink in. And uh, so, you know, it was about a week and it was, it was a tough one, but uh, getting that call and, and uh, from Shane Doan was unbelievable just to even get to go to the Spangler. And then obviously after it got canceled, which was disappointing because I was excited to do that, um, get the call to represent your country at the Olympic Games is just uh, what an honor. And it's, it, for me, it's mind blowing actually. Julian is known as a systems coach. I'm not sure you're going to have a ton of time to install systems here, Bomber. So how do you go about dealing with the X's and O's and how you want this sort of grab bag group of players who have never played together before to play when you get to China? Well, the good part is that uh, some of these players played together at the Channel One Cup right before the Spangler, which was in Russia. And uh, there's some of those players will be on the team and they got to experience uh, Claude there. Um you know what, honestly, for ho- for hockey players, systems are systems. We've all played a one-two-two trap, and we've all four-checked the same, and we play. There's a lot of uh, similarities in the D zone. There's just little tweaks here and there. The good thing about this team is that um, we're going to get to be together in Switzerland for about eight days with a little camp there, and uh, that's when we're really going to get to nail down some of those things. Then we head to China. And we don't play our – I think we get there on the second or third, and we don't play till the 10th, so – we have some practice time. We got some time to instill some uh, systems. I watched the games at the Channel One Cup, and they had about a day and a half before their first game there. So it was a lot of video for those guys. But at least now we're going to get a chance to show the video and then really work on it in practice. And uh, I can only imagine that you know having older guys like Eric and Stall and what that may really help, huh, Bomber? That you effectively have coaches on a line or on a defense pairing being able to help out some of these collegians and younger guys on the club? Yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think, uh, you know, to have, you know, a guy like, if you have Eric Stahl there, that's, you know, that you look at his pedigree in hockey. Um, I think a lot of, you know, when the guys come in, even for younger guys and, and older guys for that matter, um, you know, if they look at a guy like that, you know, that's the leader and that's somebody that, uh, you know, guys can fall behind. And all these guys have, you know, when they're, they're, they're assistant captains and captains on their teams, uh, you know, in Russia, Sweden, the Swiss League. So they're all leaders in their own right. So it's, uh, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be fun to have all these guys together and, and go through a, it's a short term tournament, but it's, it's a tournament where guys come together very quickly because they know they're representing their country. And we're going for that gold medal. For Canada, it's it's more than uh, just like the one step down because so many guys at the American League level aren't available to be called even uh, uh, as well. So you know, there's a there's a, a depth issue, but Canada showed at the last Olympic Games that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't be competitive. Do you go to these games? Um, with the same swagger that you a Canadian team normally would, do you go there with that pit in the stomach of can we get to the podium? What's what's the mindset? Because normally for Canada, it's arrive, think gold. Do you, can you arrive with the same swagger? I think so. I, I think uh, you know that that's what we're going there for. We're going there to win a gold medal, and uh, and also to represent our country uh, the best that we can. And you know that's we don't take. You know, winning a gold medal is pressure. We're just going over there. Um, like I said, some guys, it's their, their last shot, and they're, represent, they're, they're representing their own country, uh, all the people, the family. I think uh, those guys, once they get there, it's all the sacrifices that they've gone through in their hockey careers. Some guys playing in Russia that, 
you know, they're over there by themselves, not with their families. And I think this is going to be something special for those guys. And, uh, you know, we're just going to go out there and lay it on the line. Uh, the, the, as simple as that. I mean, we just, we're going to practice together. We're going to have fun together. And, uh, you know, in the end, our ultimate goal is to have the gold medal around our neck. How about the experience of the Olympics off of the ice? And I mean that positively and the possible negative. I mean, there's been all the, the warnings of your devices to be left at home. And, <laughs> and of course, if by chance you're unlucky enough to test negative and uh, maybe you're stuck there. I mean, how did you have to weigh any of that or was it a slam dunk? I'll drive the plane if I have to. I'm going. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, like I said before, uh, donor got it out of his mouth to ask me to go. <laughs> I was saying yes. Um you know, it's going to be, for me, it's it, it's the experience of a lifetime. It, it's the Olympic Games. I mean, you grow up, you watching it, um, you know, and not just hockey, like every every sport in, in the Winter Olympic, excuse me, in the Winter Olympics and the Summer Olympics, uh, for that matter. So, uh, you're right. For me, it was a slam dunk. I was just like, you're right. I will fly the plane over there. And I think Honestly, that's the attitude of, of all of our guys. I know it is of all the staff. Um, you know, we're, you know, I know Claude's just not going over there uh, so he can get another job in the NHL. He's going over to represent Canada and win a gold medal. Add to his trophy case, you bet. Yeah. Yeah, he won the trophy here once upon yeah, a time. Yeah, Blake, we won't bring if, that up. Yeah. You might remember. No. <laughs> that's a sore spot. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Bomber, you took us through your day. We haven't heard from Travis. How's Travis doing these days? Yeah, no, Travis is good. He's, uh, you know, as coaches, um, especially in the NHL, it's a, it's a tough gig. Uh, and a head coach, he's got a, he had a lot on his plate, uh, went through a lot. Uh, you know, he's got to do a lot of not only the coaching side, but the, the outside with the, you know, answering to the media all the time, having, two sessions a day on game days a lot of times. And, um, you know, that wears on guys. So he's good. He's just taking this time to rejuvenate. Um, it's funny when Claude first called me to go coach, uh, you know, he, we were talking and he told me, he said, well, listen, you know, just take this time and enjoy it with your family because, you know, the second you're back in it, you're in it. And I don't, a lot of people don't probably know this, but uh, as a player, you go to the rink and you, you go there for, you know, you're maybe there for three hours. You go practice, you know, shower up and you're out of there. Uh, as a coach, you're there at six in the morning and uh, gone, you know, non-game days maybe by four or five. And and uh, if it's a game day, you're, you're out of there by maybe midnight. And you don't see a lot of your family, even when you're at home and, and you're on the road a lot. So it's pretty much eight months of the year where you're not around your family a lot, where you, especially when you have kids. And, and uh, so it's a big... Uh, time to just take some downtime. He's got to rejuvenate and uh, relax and, and get ready for his next gig. Because, you know, in my opinion, he's he's a great coach and he's going to get another job somewhere. Intellectually, was... Nolan, you know that new coach bump is coming. Like you do. We've seen it everywhere. You know you're going to get more, you know, just that little bit of a pick-me-up. When you guys see all those wins coming right after the change, and there's been a market correction since then, um, but do, do, can you help it but look at but kind of raise your hands and go – where was that? Where was that near the end for us? <laughs> well, there's been a lot of reflection after the after the firing, and you know, I watch the games. I'm a hockey fan anyway. And, good but, for you. Not everybody can. Yeah, it's yeah, good. No, I, I think it's yeah. When you see them, you're, you it wasn't maybe a little frustrating, but I think it like there was some puck luck that didn't happen. I mean, I run the penalty kill. I take full responsibility for that. It was historically the worst ever, um, which isn't great. I know that, uh, but it was really, it's really weird because there was just, to be honest, not making excuses. There was some bad bounces. It was crazy. Some of the things that were happen, happening, I even said, I was like, man, the penalty kill, it, it's, it's even hard to be that bad, which is, <laughs> yeah. and it's not, that's not taking anything away from the players. I'm just, it was just the way goals were going in and, and, uh, I think there was some puck luck. Some guys started out slow, obviously. And uh, when we got let go, some guys started scoring and it, it just started going their way. Obviously, Dammer has been standing on his head. He's been unbelievable. Um, but honestly, I, I, I cheer for those guys. I mean, he invested in the team. Um, I was talking about it the other day with somebody that 
I've been in the organization for about 18 years now as a player and a coach, 10 years as a coach. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, love the, I love the team. I love this city. Um, you know, there's no better city to live in. And so I cheer for those guys. You're invested in them. And I want to see the players do well. You know, you've been there. You've been through the tough times, the good times with them. You remember all that. And uh, I hope they all do great. And I hope they I hope they do turn it around. It'd be an unbelievable turnaround if they could come back and actually get into the playoffs. That would be that would be awesome. Mm. The narrative we heard, Nolan, much, and you hear this oftentimes when a coaching staff turns over, is just new voice was needed. Do you buy that? Do you put any stock into that? Uh yeah, maybe. I mean, sometimes that does happen. It's just, uh, it's not that the voices went stale. Um, but, you know, there is something to be said for that sometimes. And, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, unfortunately, it, it happened to us. And, and uh, you know, it was, it was disappointing not to be able to see it through to the end. Um, you know, it's tough getting, well, I've never been let go, but I can't imagine you know, it'd still be tough, but if it was in the off season, it'd be a little different. Uh, you know, like I just hit on, it was, you know, you're invested and you're in the fire and then you get a call and you got to go clean your office out because somebody's coming in there the next day. And, um, you know, a couple of players reached out and, and said that it was weird that they come to the rink and there's different coaches there and it happened fast. So, you know, that's not the glorious side of it, um, but that's what we signed up for. You know, you're going to get fired. And and uh, somebody said to me, too, you know, you're, you're, you're not a coach until you get fired. So now that's I'm in That's what there. we say in media. You're not, you're not really having a career yeah. until you've gotten gassed uh, once. Last question on this, my man. Um, you know, the last couple of years here during a pandemic, which needless to say affected expenditures on hockey going back one off season, then you and Travis are allowed to, work out your contracts for the final year you guys get waylaid by the biggest outbreak of covid of any big four north american sports teams and then come on do you feel like you got a fair shake the last couple of years is it easy to look past everything that happened to you guys as a coaching staff or is it difficult or are you stuck on all the things that happened here even if it's the yeah. hockey gods that didn't give you the fair shake which may have been the case right uh yeah i mean it's not it's 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 not difficult to look past it. I mean, I, it, the, the whole COVID thing, it was, it was tough. I mean, I, I think, you know, that the year that it, in March, when, when the season shut down, um, you know, we were fighting for our lives actually to get it, to even get in the playoffs. I think we were sliding at the time, if I remember correctly, uh, we were heading to Arizona to, uh, to play them. And, and then we got shut down and, and uh, I just think of that, it, it, what you know that didn't that wasn't a big deal at the time but then you know the the, the bubble um i think it was hard for the players i think you saw a lot of a lot of the players didn't they weren't sure about it they didn't want to play you know some guys did uh it was a different it's difficult that as a hockey player you're, you're a scheduled animal so it's you know training camp starts in september you play until you know you get christmas you have an all-star break you go into the playoffs, then you get the summer off. And that wasn't happening. I think it threw a bunch of people for a loop. But I, having said that, I will say that the bubble was unbelievable. Like, we had a great time in there. Uh, obviously, winning helped. But uh, just the way the guys came together and started, you know, jumping on the train. And, and we started to run there. And it was awesome winning those couple rounds. And we almost beat Vegas with uh, Demer in there. And you know, all those, those are great times. And then, yeah, the, the bubble, the sort of the, the COVID year with no fans was, I think it was really difficult uh, for the players to play. I know it was some nights difficult to go out there and coach because there's no emotion in the arena. Um, you know, you need those fans there sometimes to pick you up on a back to back and you get your home crowd going with a big hit or a big goal and, and the guys get a little fired up and there was just uh man, there was none of that stuff. It was, it was pretty, it was pretty disheartening some nights uh, to play on that. So, um, yeah, you know, it was I, fair shake or not. I uh, enjoyed my whole time here. I love it. Um, I still want to coach and I still want to be in it because I love the game. 
I love being around hockey and that's all I've done in my whole life. So hopefully uh, I can land another job somewhere at some point. Uh, and I'm sure you will. Finally, for me uh, as well, I know you've been watching. You just said you were watching. So I do feel comfortable asking you this question. And I know you believe in Elias Pettersson. I know you do. So is there one thing you can point out here uh, that you think that's that's the one thing that's changed? That's the one thing uh, that he'll need to iron out here to get really back on track. Do you see anything right now that that's that's obvious uh, that you think he can turn around? Well, I think with a lot of players, when you get injured and you miss a lot of games and uh, you have a whole, I mean, I don't know how many, was it seven, eight months that he didn't play a hockey game? And you come back and it's, uh, there's no rhythm there. You, you're kind of out of it a little bit. Um, you know, he said he worked really hard in the summer and you come in and, and uh, you just can't find it at first. And, you know, I know that we tried everything and I know, uh, I know this coaching staff's uh, doing all they can. So uh, I think the good sign is that he put a couple in the other night. Um, what did Bruce say when he came in and told Bass, you got to shoot more. And I think that's what Petey does too sometimes, you know, he's just got to just shoot pucks and uh, they'll start going in. And I think, uh, and I think Bruce has hit on it before too. You know, he's just got to, in practice, he's got to be the best player out there. You want to be the best player on the team. You got to be the best player in practice. You got to be the hardest worker. Um, you look, you look at all the, the greatest players in the world, Sidney Crosby, Patrice Bergeron, Marshawn, McKinnon, McDavid, all these guys, Dreisaitl. These guys are the top. They're the best of the best. But you watch them practice, and you know why they're the best of the best when you see them. So I think that's uh, something that he's got to just implement. And you, you you learn that over time. Well, Bomber, I know uh, some uh, difficult questions about the recent past, but we're hoping for some really bright uh, days here in the near future in Beijing. We're all with you uh, for the Canadian Olympic side. Exactly. Good luck and have fun. Thanks for the time, good sir. Yeah. You were always pro with us for, as you say, a lot of years in the Canucks organization. Much appreciated. Absolutely, guys. Thanks for having me on.